Hey guys, welcome to How to Wire It. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to wire up one of these Ping ultrasonic sensors. All that you really need to wire these up are three wires. They're really easy to wire up. All you have to do is just take your wires. These are male to female jumper wires, but you can also plug the Ping sensor directly into a breadboard. So you just need some wires to hook up the Ping sensor. And there are three connections on here. On the left, or at least on mine, on the left is ground, the center is five volts, and the right side is your signal. So I'm going to wire this up with my color-coded wires, red for positive, black for ground, and white for my signal. And then these wires, it's pretty simple. You just plug them in, the red and black, into your positive and negative. In this case, it's 5 volts. And then the white signal just goes into any pin on your Arduino that can support an interrupt. Now, in the case of this Arduino, I can support it on any pin. So I'm just going to pop it into that pin, which I know is pin 10. But you want to check to make sure which pins on your Arduino support interrupts. And that's all there is to wire it. It's so simple. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the code that makes this all run. Okay, so here you can see the example code for the ping sensor. And you can find this code under file, examples, under sensors, ping. It's built right into the Arduino IDE. So, and you can even see that it gives you a little rundown of the circuit that you need to attach everything. So I know that this code seems fairly complex. It's kind of long, but honestly, the majority of it is just these large comments here, just large chunks of comments. It's actually pretty simple. And once you see how it all works, it'll all make sense. So starting up here at the top, we create a variable to hold our pin number for our ping pin. So that's pin 10 here that I have mine attached to. And then in setup, all we do is we initialize our serial line so that we can send readings back to the computer. And in loop, we create, the first thing that we do is we, we create three variables, duration, inches, and centimeters. And the way that these sensors work is that they send out an ultrasonic ping, a very, very high frequency ping that we can't hear, and much like sonar, waits to hear a ping back. So, as you can imagine, it's sending it out at the speed of sound and waiting at the speed of sound for it to come back, for that ping to come back. So, that's basically what we're doing here. So, we first we set the ping pin as an output because we're going to send a ping and to start this sensor sending out a ping we we bring it low we bring the ping pin low pin 10 to low and then we wait a tiny amount of time and then we set it high and then we set it back to low and that initializes a reading from the sensor and at that point, what we want to do is then switch this ping pin, this pin 10 here. We don't want to send a pulse out at now. We want to wait for a pulse to come back in and come into our pin. So we set our ping pin as an input. And then duration, this variable here, is basically it's the amount of time in, millis in microseconds so that's, I believe, thousandths of a millisecond. And it waits for a pulse in, which is a pulse coming back from the sensor to the pin here. So we send a pulse out, we send a ping outwards, and then we flip our pin to an input and wait for that ping to come back to the sensor. And based on how long that takes, we can calculate how far away the sound was when it bounced off of an object and back into our sensor here. And the way that we do that is we have our two variables, inches and centimeters, and we have two functions that have been created here. 
which is microseconds to inches and microseconds to centimeters. And all they do is uses some math that we know the speed of sound as it travels through air. And it will travel approximately 74 microseconds. Sound will travel one inch. So we take microseconds to inches and we pass it duration, which is the amount of time that it took to ping out and back. And then we divide that by 74, which is 74 microseconds per inch. And then because it took, it took a round trip of going out, bouncing off of something and coming back, that's actually twice the distance of the object. It's the whole round trip from the object and back. So we have seconds for the whole round trip, or sorry, inches for the whole round trip here, but then we need to divide it by two to get the actual distance away from just the ping sensor, not out and back. So that's why we divide it by two. And that gives us second, or that gives us inches. And centimeters is basically the exact same thing, except that it takes 29 microseconds per centimeter for sound to travel through air. And then again, we divide by two to t divide the round trip into just the one-way trip of the distance from the sensor to whatever the sound bounced off of. And then at the end here, all we do is we just print this information out to the serial line. It just prints the inches and then IN for inches, and then the distance in centimeters and CM. And we delay 100 microseconds and start it all over, 100 milliseconds, sorry, and start it all over again. So I know it seems like there's a lot there, but really there isn't. There's just sending out a pulse, waiting for that pulse to come back, and then doing just a little bit of math to figure out how far the sound traveled based on how long it took for that pulse to come back. So now let's go ahead and take a look and see it actually running. So I'm going to plug the Arduino into my computer and bring up the serial monitor. And you can see that the sensor, there's a little green light there that's blinking away on the sensor. And we're getting readings. So as I move my hand up and down, you can see that the readings on the serial monitor are changing. So yeah, pretty simple little modules to wire up and fairly accurate. You can see it's, you know, 68, 67 centimeters. It's accurate basically to the centimeter, maybe even slightly more. So if you have a little robotics project or anything like that, where you kind of need to detect fairly accurate distances, these are great and they're fairly cheap little modules. You can even find them for as cheap as maybe $5 on eBay if you're willing to wait a little while for shipping. So yeah, great little sensors and not too hard to wire up. So yeah, if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you like these videos in general, hey, subscribe to my channel. I try to put videos out every week or so. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.